everybody, and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. My name is Phoenix, and once again, I am joined with uh, one of my lovely co-hosts on, on this, my good old friend, uh, Jolene. Hello. <laughs> welcome in. I think this makes 100 Wattpad book readings. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I think it actually does. <laughs> if not, I'm going to feel real stupid. But it's like real close. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to your house and fight you if it, this isn't the hundredth one. Watch it be like the ninety-nine. <laughs> but uh, we're fight yeah. physical altercation. <laughs> physical, you're gonna beat the shit. And the and the target parking lot. Yeah, <laughs> you gonna see me coming out of a target? You're gonna actually sprint. behind the target. Yeah, because if we were in the front of the target, someone's gonna say something. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna pull me behind the target and beat me up? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. No one can save you. Violence right here. Oh my god. No, I'm trying to pull out the playlist and see how many is on here. Oh my god, there is 99 episodes on there. So technically, this is the 100th one. How honored do you feel that you get to be the 100th person? <laughs> I, I I did... What did I... Did I threaten you a couple weeks ago? I think you did. <laughs> like, Let me be the 100th one. Yeah. Let, we gotta do the 100th. Yeah, and look at that. We did it. Thank you guys wow, for watching amazing. this. <laughs> Just ends right there. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Just a picture in... <laughs> but uh, to honor, I guess, the 100th episode, uh, we've read fandoms that I'm familiar with, like One Piece, Dag and Romp, uh, some other ones, like Total Drama and whatnot, so why not go into a fandom that I have no idea about. <laughs> Woo! I was really tempted to send you a bunch of, like, edits. <laughs> I've just been like, who is this? What am I, I I just spent, like, the half, the past hour just watching edits of these two. <laughs> and I love them. They're lovely. Oh, yeah, that was what's supposed to be the, the wheel thing. But uh, we got the strategy with the fucking <laughs> Trump like expired. So, uh, terrible, yeah, terrible. We're, we're finally reading, uh, Jolene picked this out, their recommendation, called Cupcake, uh, Arcane AU VX Caitlin. I read the first paragraph and was like, good enough. Yeah. <laughs> what an inch. Uh, it's listed mature. Is this gonna be okay? It's will be fine. Okay, alright. <laughs> there's I like, there's like a ton of chapters. We, I don't even think we'll make it to that part. Yeah, there's 20 parts, and it says 3 hours and 40, which, you know, times 2 that, since we're reading out loud and doing other crap, so... Yeah, that's, like, a little over 7. But I love the cover art. This shit looks awesome. I'm very excited for it. There's actually pictures in the fic, so you'll be able to have, like, a visual as we go through. Oh my god, I'm gonna be looking at the pictures and looking at the words, because, oh boy, do I like to read... <laughs> Alright, uh, Do we have a special little coin? Oh, I have this dirty penny that's on my table. <laughs> but, uh, this is- shout out to Fluffy Puppy 809- wait, yeah, 8091. Two houses divided, two worlds with different, uh, perspectives. They hardly interact with each other, but one day they will, and it turns out with something small. It's gonna be like the, um... I don't know why my brain went to this immediately with the two world thing. It was uh, it was Tinkerbell and her like lost sister that was a winter fairy. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I I know Secret of the Wings. Yeah, Secret Honestly, of the Wings. Honestly, one of the top tier like Pixie Hollow films. Yeah, Tinkerbell top tier. I'm so glad she came from the Peter Pan thing. She has her. Own I was spell. thinking about like Romeo and Juliet. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> That's what you meant. <laughs> like how I went to Tinkerbell. <laughs> you went to like the that. Okay. <laughs> but uh oh yeah, flip coin. That belongs to me. Alright, uh do you want to be heads or tails to read first? Tails. Alright, tails you read, heads I read. <laughs> Alright, it's heads. Alright. Also, I don't know what any of these characters look like. I'm gonna have to, like, go off of the pictures <laughs> for this shit. Off of the pictures? Okay, yeah. I'm assuming V is the blue-haired one. Is Wrong. There... You oh. already fucked up. I'm gonna kill myself. I'll be back. <laughs> so. 
I don't have Vi. any lore. Oh, Vi. Vi is the Vi is the pink haired one. Okay. And Caitlyn is the blue haired one. Damn. You'll, right. Though you'll get like other characters, specifically the dark blue. If you see someone with braids and blue hair, that's Jinx or Powder. There okay. you go. I know who Jinx is because she was all over mm-hmm. for like hot women and whatnot. And like, yes. All over for hot women? Yeah, that's. <laughs> I didn't mean to phrase it like that. She's kind of came I mean, out. <laughs> you know? If those are your feelings. Yeah. No, that's how I'm feeling right now. All over for hot women. Tag me down. Fucking. I mean, if you say so. Quote you know. me on that. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll quote you on it. Yeah, put that shit in the evidence folder. <laughs> All over for hot women. <laughs> Alright, uh, how did you pronounce the name again? V? Vi. Vi, Vi. okay. Like Vine, but without the N E. Okay. Yeah, like Vi or Violet. God, I, <laughs> I was thinking of the fucking platform vine. God damn it. Violin. <laughs> Fi grunts as she manages to pull herself up and jump to the next mark with others following her. We're almost there, she says, as her sister Milo and Clogger. Clagger. Clagger, gotcha. Follow behind her. Oh man, Milo mumbles under his breath. It feels like forever since they started climbing. Vi was the first one to make it to the top. The sun was bright and it shines brighter than any other. Hey, Powder, come take a look, Vi says to her little sister uh, as she reaches the top. Both sisters walk to see the astounding sight of the city that this to be believed to be the city of progress. Whoa, Powder says, amazed by the sight of the city. It's nice to get above it all, right? I need to take my phone off. I don't want it to be like, "Eh," you know. Uh, eh. All right. (laughs) Pits. Mm -hmm. Piltover? Piltover. Piltover. Who the fuck is that? Is that a guy's name? The place. Oh, that, oh. (laughs) That's the city's name. I mean, to be fair, there is a a person named Powder. I I wanted to put it past this to be like, yeah, that's a person's name. Piltover. This vast city of progress in steel... Just seems too big for two girls to live in. They wouldn't fit in. They knew they wouldn't. Because they lived lower than Pilstover. Literally. An airship flies over them. Patter was simply impressed by this. She wondered what it would be like to be on that ship. One day, I'm going to ride in one of those things, she says so surely. And one day, I'm going to shoot one of them down, Milo says. Vi pushes Milo's arm out of the way and continues. One of them wasn't so sure if they would be doing this. Vi, are are you sure about this? Clagger says. Look, if we get caught, we're we're not going to get caught. Vi says, sounding like she was so sure. We'll be in it. We'll be in and out before anyone notices. They all followed Vi, following her every move, every order. It seemed easy, but no one said doing a heist was easy. Wait, they're doing a heist? Wait, are they like... What's the, what is the universe of Arkin? <laughs> okay, no, no, no. This is essentially bringing you through, like, episode one. Oh, okay. So, okay, this is just reenacting, but adding, like, X stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can get behind this. I like this idea. <laughs> I mm-hmm. like it when, like, writers re, like, redo, like, episodes. Like, and rewalk add, you through. Yeah, rewalk you through, but adding scenes and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Oh shit, I lost my fuck. Oh, uh, they follow me every time. Okay, there it is. They reach the roof that gives them the ability to cross, but they will have to follow by steps to get there. Alright, everyone, follow me. Just don't look down. She slides down the edge of the roof and jumps to the balcony. Cupcakes were left there unsupervised. Probably a bad idea. She stands on the railing and jumps across the street to another rooftop. She makes it look so easy. Milo cracks his knuckles and pushes Cliver aside as he, so he, as if he can do it better. He does exactly like Vi does, but he doesn't land as gracefully as Vi does. Cliver grunts and he lands on the rooftop with Milo. Water splashes on his face as he lands and stuffs a cupcake in his mouth. <laughs> Couldn't we have at least just walked there? Cliver asks Vi. 
Gotta stay out of, this, out of sight for this one, she answers. She looks up to see that her little sister hasn't moved an inch. She was scared of falling. She was afraid of messing things up. Called it, <laughs> Milo said out loud, like he knew this would happen. This is on you, V. I'll get her, Cliver insisted. No. But Vi insisted that she talk to her sister. Powder, look at me. The little girl didn't dare to ignore her sister. What did I tell you? That I'm ready? Powder exhales. That's right. So? Powder finally gained, found the courage and slid down the roof and joined the others. She jumped to the balcony and was relieved that she was able to hold on. Phew! She jumped down the railing and, and readied herself to jump. She almost made the jump but lost her footing on the land. She almost fell but thankfully was caught by her sister. That was a close one. Thanks. Vi smiles. She pulled her sister up and they were back on track. Cliver was glad that Powder was okay. But Milo was scoffing and rolling his eyes. I do like these band, like these, th th is this like a, fa a found family trope? Or are they all related? Uh, this found family. Found family. Dude. Fucking best trope ever. <laughs> yeah. You should definitely watch the show. Uh, no one? But. Fuck it. I'm gonna watch your ass. <laughs> See, I've watched two shows for you, and I haven't gotten any shows for you to watch. Oh shit, no, you're right. I, I, I've been living a lie right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cliver's breath was heavy. He was nervous. He didn't want to get caught. Would it Van Vander? Vander. Yeah. What if Vander finds Vander's out like their father? Oh, is he like the evil CEO or some shit? No, no, no. He's oh. a wonderful man. Okay. Oh. Clever was such a worry wart. Look around you. You think anyone up topside going hungry? Besides, this is exactly the sort of job Vander would have pulled when he was our age. They were at their destination. But Vine stopped to make sure that there were if there were anyone who was in or out. I'm going. Are you with me or not? Claver looked over at Milo. Milo simply just shrugged. Claver looked down inside. Vander's gonna kill us. Yeah, only if we screw up. So don't screw up. How encouraging. <laughs> And then throws down the edge, then drops from the edge of the balcony. She looked around to see if, we, if they were in the all clear, looking inside the apartment. No one seems to be home, so they're all good. All clear, V says too loud. Milo comes down first. He went to open the door, but it was locked. Who locks their balcony? Milo groans. He takes out his trusty tool to unlock the door. Quaver helps powder down. And he was the last one to drop him to the balcony. Phew. There's a ton of enforcers down there. It means we're in the right place. The north side of, of Topside were always flooded with enforcers because the stuff that people had in their homes were valuable to people like V, or Vine, Powder, Cliver, and Milo. You're going to get the door open anytime soon? Vi says impatiently. I'm working on it. Seeing as I'm the only one who knows how to pick locks, I suggest... Vine interrupts Milo by kicking the door open. Milo was surprised. Clever... <laughs> just, just fucking impatient bitch right here. I love her. Where the fuck does Caitlin come in here? Just wait. Just oh, wait. Just throw me the intro. Can, wait a minute. Can I guess? <laughs> can I make what? a hypothesis? Since, like, Vi sure. and, like, her ragtag of, like, found family and whatnot are, like, robbers. So they're, like, mm -hmm. obviously poor. I feel like Kaylin is one of those upper-class people. And then they find oh. each other and they love each other. So oh it's, like, God. almost like a Romeo and Juliet situation. How did you know? Is it? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so yes. Smart. Caitlin is the daughter of, like, so essentially they're kind of, like, in an oligarchy type. If I were to put it in a government because there's, like, the council people, mm -hmm. right? And Caitlin's mom is, like, one of the council people. Oh, I see. 
Dude, I can't believe I was so fucking on the money. And then, like, Vi is from, uh, oh god, the Undercity, which is essentially, like, the slums. Gotcha. So they steal from the from the rich to give back to the poor. Mm-hmm. So it's like a Robin Hood kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't say it's like to give back, but it's more like keep for like, themselves. Not, kind of okay. for for their group for their family. Gotcha, dude! I cannot believe I predicted that shit so fast. Oh my God. <laughs> I swear I've never seen Arcane in my life. Ah oh, shit! Where the fuck did I leave off on before I got on my little rant? <laughs> Oh, uh, we're oh, you know, kicking down the door. Yeah. Kyra hits Milo from behind, and Powder follows right behind him. Animals. The room was empty, but that doesn't mean that there wasn't anything valuable. The place was big. Gold seemed to be almost everywhere. Vi drops the bag and begins to look around at the book. These books weren't stories. They were magic and mythology. You know, Cliver, for once you're right. We are... Definitely not supposed to be in here, Milo says. He looks up from the desk to see what see what kind of collectibles can be taken for playment. They were they all looked around the apartment and found things that already seemed useful. Vi looked up at the chalkboard and she thinks that this wasn't some ordinary apartment. Must be an inventor. Hmm, powder hums. She looks up and down and then looks at a familiar object. Whoa, I think that's a real, what does that say? Valdiani. Valdiani. She pushes down the trinket and opens it up to play a musical note. There were little orbs that looked like they were flying inside. Powder was, Powder was so happy to see something so beautiful as, as so beautiful as such. Oh, that's so cute. Wait, that's what yeah. Powder looks like? She's just, she's just a little guy. She's just a little baby. She's a little baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What about this? Milo says proudly. Powder just looks at the object with disgust. That's a nose hair trimmer. Is it, like, covered in gold and diamonds? And they're like, yeah, but it's rich. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Keep an eye out for anything that looks valuable, Powder. Fi says to her sister. Before Milo fills the bag with junk, Powder puts the little toy in the bag and was heading to a different room when she heard Milo call out, Um, guys? He seemed to have found something, but Powder couldn't see with Cliver and Milo in the way. Wait, Vine, how the hell did we- how the hell did we find this place? Cliver asked. It was a tip from Little Man. Little- who the fuck is- it's just like a little guy. (laughs) <laughs> he's like three, I, he's like three foot. <laughs> I don't remember. The fuck is this little man? <laughs> Just leave it. Come on, Vine says. Patter finds a corridor that only that had only one room. What that and like wow? What a, is it like at the end of a hallway? I hate that. Like yeah, a corridor is like a hall. Yeah. That's that's so scary though of like just having a long ass room like a hallway that just leads to one singular door. <laughs> I don't know. That's like it's a horror movie right. trope. <laughs> How can anyone have so much stuff? Simple. Just get born lucky. Power didn't pay attention to what was happening, so she continued to search for whatever. She opened the door to see a bunch of different trinkets and paper. They didn't seem like anything special, so she left them alone. She picked up something that looked like gold. And, if it was valuable, it was a good trade. She grabbed a book and read what it was. There wasn't a name on the front of the cover, and it wasn't anything interesting either. She looked over the desk that had what looked like sandwiches. Oh, fuck yeah, sandwiches. (laughs) Woohoo! She didn't hesitate to bite down the sandwich and savor the bite. To her left, she found a purple pouch with gold spots. She set down the sandwich and picked up the pouch. It was heavy. It had something inside of it. Powder opened the pouch and discovered what was inside. Money! (laughs) Jackpot! She whispered. She didn't want the others to know she had found this. She wanted this to be her find. She still kept looking around and ate the sandwich. 
Everything seemed to be going according to plan. Who fucking makes sandwiches, leaves them, and then just goes? <laughs> well, sometimes you forget. I guess you're right. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and popcorn <laughs> this over to you. I mean, I've done that with food. Oh, okay. A door opens to the hallway in the apartment building. Two people, a girl and a man, walk to the exact apartment. A girl was curious if her friend went to the Undercity. You really went to the other Undercity to get these? Weren't you afraid? A little danger is worth the risk, don't you think? Caitlin carried the box of stuff for Jace to carry to his study. He seemed invested in what he was doing with so much with so much of the stuff he needed. Oh, I also forgot I left my bag of money in there somewhere. And without intention, one of the objects fell out of the box. Oh, Caitlin gasped. Uh, careful. That's your parents' money you're dropping, Jay said sarcastically. Caitlin went to pick up the object from the floor. She set the box down and put it back in the box and looked over to see what Jay, to see Jay struggling to get the door open. Is someone in? Th is someone in there? Jay said out loud. Caitlin picked up the box and then saw Jay trying to slam his body into the door. But he tried again. An explosion pushed the door open. That explosion made Caitlin drop the box. It happened so fast, Jay passed out. Jay? Jay? He didn't respond. Caitlin went to the door to see a pink-haired girl in the apartment building rush out, of, out the, to the back balcony. Hey, she goes to try to stop them, but half the balcony was broken down. Caitlin was unable to get the pink-haired girl in time, but she could still see her from what was left of the balcony. Shit. Emergency alarms went off and felt over, and that means they had to run now. Hey, what do you have in there? Give it back! Let's go, now! Vi urges everyone to run, but Caitlin wasn't going to let them get away. She ran out of the apartment and ran down the stairs. She had to move away from people who were already coming up the stairs. Watch it, girl! Sorry, she made it to the first floor and ran out the entrance. She looked around to see if the thieves were there, and but she couldn't see him. So she looked up to the building to see if they had gotten down yet. No one seems to be on the roof, so she looked to the sides of the building, but something catches her eye. A coin. She remembers she left her money in the apartment, and now she was stolen. Now it was stolen from her. There she knew there weren't common thieves, and they were Zonites. Zon is like the Undercity, you know? Okay. So, like, so, where they are, that's like the above ground? Yeah, this is like top side. Gotcha. She ran to where they might have ran, and luckily she was able to catch up to them. She was right behind him, and she knew that she, and knew that, and she knew that, didn't, oh wait, <laughs> and she knew that, oh, I cannot read, and she didn't intend to stop until they, yeah, intend to stop until they got away. Give it back. Stop right there. Caitlin looked behind her and saw that the enforcers were, were after them. They threw flying ropes that almost caught Caitlin. Watch it. That's Kierman's daughter. Kierman is the counselor. You know, like the fa the family name. Her name is Caitlin Kierman. Like that's her full name. Oh my God, she's royalty. Oh, she's just essentially. Royalty. Yeah. Caitlin continued to chase after the thieves. Get them off! Caitlin knew this was a chase after the kids she was chasing, but she was chasing them for one reason. They make it to the main square of Filtover, still running to the bridge. Faster, says the leader of the children. Just stop, you can't keep running forever, Caitlin yelled. And forces from, um, um, forces from above heard that from below. Down there, they can't get away. The four kids are so close to home. They need to cross the bridge. Caitlin was behind them. She never ran so fast before and she couldn't catch her breath. One of the enforcers caught up to Caitlin and stopped her from crossing the bridge. No, let me go. They, please. Sorry, Miss Kierman. I can't risk it, says the enforcer. Caitlin was frustrated. She was so close to getting her money, but it appears she was going to be in trouble for that. Vi and the others grunt as they turned a corner. Milo was eerily desperate to get away from the law. Go, go, go. Vi halts and looks at what looks at what looks to be a waste pipe. She opens the hatch, the metal hatch. Milo did not like that. He had to go through that this again. Oh man, not again. I just got this shirt. 
Pyro yells and he was kicked by Vi to hurry the fuck up. <laughs> All four kids slide into the waste pipe, escaping the enforcers and landing into waste. Again. Milo was the first to land at the pipe. Clagger was right behind Milo and bumps into him. Powder came out after Clagger and Vi and Vi came out last. Milo was so irritated they had to go through that damn pipe again. That last time was the last time we were doing this. Well, this time the last this time's the last time, Vi assures Milo. Guys, what was that? What the hell happened back there? Clagger asked. All eyes were on Powder like she was responsible for almost everything. Powder tried to make them believe that she had nothing to do with what happened, and frankly, my Milo doesn't believe one word. I don't know. I didn't do anything. You could fill a damn library with all the things you didn't do, Milo argued. Guys, we just emptied a Piltover penthouse right under the Enforcer's noses, Vi says, trying to get the attention of her siblings. So if you're done beating yourselves up, let's go home. Vi said proudly, and home they went. Cassandra was so worried that Caitlin was hurt. Tobias was furious that Jace even had such equipment for whatever he was studying in that apartment. He felt as if Jace wasn't being careful enough with his daughter around him. And that after an explosion like that, he didn't seem to trust him now. Caitlin disliked that Jace was being the one to ask the questions. Why can't they ask her? She was the one who saw those misfits taking the stuff and running with it. This was silly, and Mother didn't ask Caitlin about anything in particular. She didn't even ask about the money. And that was a little relieving. And thank goodness that Jace was alive. Caitlin would blame herself if anything bad happened to her. Caitlin sits in her room on her bed, looking out the window. And she was thinking about those thieves that took Jace's stuff and her money. She just liked that she she had to sit in her room and act like things were fine. What is wrong with her? Two Doberman puppies came into Caitlin's room. Caitlin smiled, loving the company of her fellow dogs. She picks up one of the pups and pets it, wishing she didn't have to do what she did. Oh, I wish I, wish I didn't leave my money there, she said. Puppy tilted its head as if the puppy was wondering what Caitlin meant. But of course, the pups wouldn't understand what Caitlin was saying. If I were fast enough to catch them, I would have gotten my money back. And now I feel guilty. The puppy licks Caitlin's face, trying to cheer her up. She smiled, thankful that she at least has someone to talk to. At least you're not terrible company. And she knows that her parents mean well, but they just rarely let her have freedom. She wants to get away, but how? If I were a bird, I'd be able to fly away from here, but I can't. I'm bound to the cement cage and I can hardly do anything. I need to get out of here. One of the pups stood on their hind legs, looking out the window. Caitlin looks over at the pup, then she begins to think, What if her parents didn't have to know she was gone? What if she could get away for just a few hours? Yes, you're a genius. She said as she picked up the pup. She would have to make it there by midnight. Her parents will be asleep by then. So, midnight it is. You did what? Milo yelled. I'm sorry. Powder tried to apologize. I tried to fight him, fight him off with Mouser, but it didn't work. Who saw, who saw that coming? Milo said, raising his hand, expecting someone else to join him. We never should have gone down there, Clagger says, regretting that they went there at all. Doesn't matter, this stuff's gone, Vi says as she walks to her sister, assuring her that what happened to this stuff didn't matter now. It's all right, Powder. At least you're okay, she says, touching her sister's face. Powder was glad, but she had something else to say. Not all of it. What? Vi stops. Not all of it's gone, Powder says as she reached into her belt pocket and takes out a pouch. Milo takes the pouch, but Vi snatches it out of his hands to see it for herself. She opens it, and to surprise, she saw money. Clagger was very much surprised to see how much was in there. Damn, that's a lot, says Clagger. Vi couldn't agree more. It was a lot, and with this much money, they could get by just fine. They could get by just fine with a bag full of money like this. Powder, where'd you get this? Vi asked. I found it from the apartment. Why was impressed to find this? She knew that it would be rude to keep what was already found by someone else, so she let her sister keep the money. You know what, Powder? Fears. 
Vi said as she tossed the bag back to her sister. Find us keepers. Don't let, it, don't let anyone else have it. Powder smiled. What about me and Kalagir? Like I said, find us keepers. What? I get my face bashed in and she gets a pass? <laughs> yep. All four kids walk into the elevator and head down into the Undercity. Milo just hates that Powder was the one to who got to keep something and they still come back with nothing. To him, Powder was a jinx. <gasps> With the name of that one character I just mentioned earlier. <laughs> oh my god! It all it all's connected. <laughs> Correct. Every time. Every time she comes, something goes wrong. She jinxes every job. Powder just hates when Milo complains about her. She wishes she had the strength to fight back. Just drop it, Milo. Oh, I had had enough of Milo. And despite Powder having a bag of money, she was wondering how she was going to keep Vander from knowing what happened. <laughs> That's a, is that exactly how the first episode goes? No. Oh. It is not. There's definitely a couple edits. But it, it has a fairly similar plot line. Gotcha. Alright. To Zon? Yes. <gasps> oh my god. Let's go. Phoenix says a word right. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. No. Wait, this is what the fucking Undercity looks like? Um. It's very This dark. is the bridge that they were on. Oh, gotcha. The Undercity is, like, lower, I guess. Gotcha, okay. Alright, let's see. The bridge seems to be the most guarded spot in between the cities of Pitsor and Zone. Zone. Piltover and Zahn. God damn it. <laughs> Piltover and Zahn. <laughs> Caitlin knew that she had to distract them to get through without being spotted. She found a pebble that was perfect to, perfect to use to distract the enforcers. Are, are the pro enforcers like the police in this universe? That would yeah. work for the rich? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm learning. <laughs> All right. I only get one shot, she whispered to herself. She stuck on the, to the sides of the bridge and watched two enforcers meddle with their pipes and talking about how most of the people in Zon were evil and stupid people. Did you hear about that boy, J Jace? Yeah, Jace. He blew up an apartment yeah. that was owned by by the Karamans? Karamans. Karamans. I'm so fucking smart. <laughs> what a load of bull. I'm serious. He was kicked out of the academy, and now he's on trial. Wait, wh wait, wasn't he just a bystander that just, like... <laughs> no, 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 that was Jace's apartment. Oh. My bad. They're robbing Jace. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> now he's getting kicked out of the academy. The question is whether he, what he was, what is, whether, what, whatever was he doing in there. It's not his fault. He only wanted to help, nor was it nor it was my fault because I spied them stealing from me and Jace. Caitlin thought to herself, wondering where to throw the stone and how to get them to leave the bridge. She knew she wasn't like them. Uh she wasn't as crafty as Zonite. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah, I'm so fucking smart. Zonite was. She began to second-guess herself about the stone and thought hard about it. What if she tried a little something believable? Even the enforcers would have to run for it. Yeah, that would be perfect. She moved away from the spot she had on the bridge and went into an alley. She went through the alley she came through. She changed to a different alley and didn't believe it would work. But she held her breath and let out a, the, the loudest scream she could muster. And she pointed at the bone chilling screen to her left. What was that? A screen, you idiot. We had to check the perimeter. The like moth to a flame, they were easily distracted by where the screen was coming from. They were dumb enough to even leap to even pass by Caitlin hiding in the shadows. But thankfully she wasn't caught. And with hesitation, she ran to the bridge and didn't look back. It felt like she was breaking some that was meant to be broken. She felt like 
this was what she was meant to do. Finally, now I can get in there and get my pouch back. My need is a... Before she could finish her thought, she was cut off by someone she was familiar with. Going somewhere, Caitlin? Miss Grayson? She stood there looking down at the girl, holding a bag to what seemed to be her luggage to her, and noticed that Caitlin was heading in the direction that was restricted to locals, even nobles. Wait, but- oh, because they're- okay, I get it. <laughs> I was like, why is it restricted? I thought people live over there. Discrimination, you yeah. know? This is this is wealth disparity and oh, and classism. This is base. This is basic classism to the extreme. What are you doing out here so late? I I was just. <laughs> I love I, the accent you have given her. I feel like she, she she's a noble, right? So she's like high class. So I feel like she would talk like she's all hot. Not shit. like a noble, like she, um, she's an enforcer. Oh, she's like the high command enforcer. Oh, so she's like, she like she's like the chief of like the little policeman then. Kinda, I don't, I don't. She's the chief, but she's definitely up there in rank. Damn. Uh, I I just wanted to. Do your parents know that you're out here? No, but please don't tell them I ran off, please. Rory hit the back of Kate's head. She was afraid of getting in trouble. She didn't want to go back home. She only wanted to get her money, and then she would come home. That was all. But Grayson knew better than to cut her loose. I am sorry, Caitlin, but I can't allow you to wander to the Undercity. It is too dangerous. But I will come back. I don't make it. I won't make any detours, I promise. But Enforcer Grayson did not listen. She took hold of Caitlin's wrist and tried to lead her off the bridge. No, stop, please. <laughs> I would not. I do not want to fight you, Caitlin. It is our job to keep everyone or anything from coming in or out of both cities. I cannot let you enter. Caitlin pulled with all of her strength. Something was telling her that she didn't want to go home at all. This little side of her wouldn't want to stay in. Piltover. 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 She wanted to be free. She wanted to break free. I swear I won't say anything. I'll come back. I promise I won't mention any names. I don't want to stay in that house all day. Finally, after hearing those words fly from her mouth, she could finally feel the, ch the chains break. She feels as if she was denying herself. Oh, deceiving. Fuck. <laughs> She feels like she was meant to be free, but she was, but she was not a zonite. She can see herself crying, but she dared not shed any tears. I just want to be, to be free by myself. Please let me be vulnerable just this once. Please, that's all I ask. Grayson paused. She hesitated to let Caitlin go, but just moved by the girl's motion, she released her from her palm. If, if you say you will come back, I'm counting on you that you will. I promise I will, she claims, and she promised herself that when the time was right, she would come back. If I don't find, find what you, if you do not find what you're looking for, go to Vander. He works at the bar called The Last Drop. He might help you with what you're looking for if you ask him. Caitlin nods, understanding that if she needs that, if she needs that help. She moved into the direction she aimed for. She did not look back. I love the, like... Wait, wasn't it, like, the upper side? Like, that big town that they shown over at the very beginning? Like, all whites and yellow yes. and stuff? Yes. yes. This is very green, and I like the contrast of it. Mm-hmm. The, the smog and everything. Yeah. They made an effort to make these places look distinguishably different and whatnot, and they gave them their own little characteristics, and I like it. I like it. It tickles my brain. <laughs> the underground world looked depressing, wild, and frightening. Caitlin wasn't prepared for entering the lion's den. Many people in the city look like they come from a circus and they ran away from it. They look like they could, think they look like they could hurt you and make you do bad things. But Caitlin was prepared. 
Everyone was moving from up and down, front and center, and some did not look human at all. The people here looked nasty and inappropriate in a few ways. Kate didn't even look, didn't even know how to process how solemn. Yeah, solemn this world was. They didn't have enough money or food to eat. She said find the last drop. And he asked for directions to find it. Grayson said to go to Vander. Maybe he he goes Maybe he goes there for a while. But who should I ask? Asking questions like where is Vander could be a little too personal. But she asked a few people where the last drop was, and some of the people she spoke to probably never been there before and hadn't been there for a while. After a few, she stopped by a fisherman, giving her a wide grin. He, he spoke in a language Kanlin couldn't understand, but what only sounded like gibberish to her. She had several knives. Oh, he had several knives on a plank of wood to his left shoulder, armor, and had a patch on his left eye. He seemed to know what Kanlin was looking for. Hello. Um. Do you know where I can find a place called the Last Drop? The giant fish gave her a... Yeah, wait, the giant fish? <laughs> Is it... Wait, was it a, it's just a big fish man? I guess so. Oh, shit. I thought, like, when they said that some of the people didn't look human, I thought they meant, like, they were just being assholes. I'd be like, man, these people look dirty and poor. <laughs> I thought that's what they meant. They actually have people that are just not human. <laughs> I thought it was like what is the, like a metaphor, like at, like sim, like symbolism. No, <laughs> nope. The giant fish gave her a piece of paper that was a drawing of what seemed to be a picture of a mug of beer inside of a giant circle. He pointed at the direction Caitlin needed to find. She thanked the fisher the man. I thought that said fisherman. No, that does say fishman. <laughs> Maybe it's my stupidity. <laughs> They're pointing in the. Pointing her in the right direction. He raised his hand to wave goodbye at her. She was almost surprised to see him wave at her. So she thought to wave back at him. See, there's some nice people in the slums. Down here in the underground. <laughs> Finally, she found what? the place she was looking for. The place had a huge sign that spelled out the name of the place. And it became very pretty clear that Caitlin knew this was it. The sign looked exactly like the picture that the fishman gave her. It took a moment to, for her to think she wants it. Fuck. <laughs> it took a moment for her to think if she wants to enter that place or not. She doesn't even know if this man will be there at all. What's not? But what's not to try and see for herself? I gotta say, this bar looks pretty fucking cool. I like the 3D models. You know what this fucking thing's giving off? This movie what? I watch, fucking um, Treasure Planet, like the the 3D model looking things. It's giving off Treasure Planet. <laughs> I don't know if you hmm. ever watched it. I've never seen it. Oh my god, it's such a it's, people hated the movie a lot, but I liked it. <laughs> it was like an action like Disney movie where like like these two boys dreamed about. There's like this planet that's entirely made out of treasure and they go out seeking it bro we'll sit you yeah, down and watch cool. it it's so good it performed horribly in the box office all right i'll now ping pong it off okay hold up oh i'll be gone the place was dark with dim lighting, and a lot of people were there. There were so many people she didn't even think to count. She walked through the many people who were playing pool, sitting down talking, and having a drink. She asked them if they knew where Vander was. They simply ignored her question and kept on with their games and conversations. If no one could find Vander, how could she find... If no one could find Vander, how could she find Vander herself? She's not a Zonite. No one here is Vander then, she said, sitting down at the bar. I guess I'm out of luck. I don't know if I'll be getting home with my pouch any time soon. A large man with gray hair and a beard rose from the bar. It almost started Caitlin for a brief moment. 
This man looked at Kate with two bottles of what looked like an alcoholic beverages for these people here. After he pours a drink for a few people, he turns his attention towards you. What will it be then? Caitlin looked up at him, confused, and didn't comprehend what he said. Excuse me? Asked you what will it be. You come here for a drink, or do you just sit down here waiting for someone to talk to you? Well, it's just that I was told I would find a, van a man named Vander here, but it feels like I've lost my luck in. Well, I'm him, and for someone like you to come all the way, all the way from Piltover, you're not going to find much. This man was the Vander. Uh, this man was Vander. Uh, this, uh, this enforcer reason talked about. This man looked like he came from a book from one of Kate's sto stories that she had read. She was in awe of how big this man was. So, why are you here? Well, it kind of involves a theft in the matter, and everything went silent. Everyone looked over at the bar, directly at both Caitlin and Vander. Vander, she thought she was in trouble. A bit of advice, never ask what goes on down or up here and on. It's just the way things are here. Caitlin swallows her fear and turns back to Vander. But, other than asking that, why are you here? She sighed. She did not know if the people inside the bar will kick her out or kill her. She did not know if she could really trust them, but she answered Vander. Like I was saying, I'm here because something was stolen from me. Stolen? Vander questions, what was stolen from you? A pouch. It was filled with money and it belonged to me. I can't help you find what you're looking for, but... If, bleh, I can't help you find what you're looking for if you can't describe who took it. He had a good point. Without evidence, it was pointless. So she told Vander who she thinks she saw in detail of the, the person's face and color. This girl had pinkish red hair and she looked a bit like she was my age, but her eyes were va vaguely vague and she was unable to describe it. Vander looked at the young lady and took, looked off to his sides. He probably knows who the girl was, but he asked what is her business being here at all. Before Caitlin spoke, she leaned into Vander's ear and whispered, I'm the daughter of the counselor of Piltover. Vander knew it was bad enough for a girl like her to be here in this hellhole, but he knew if anything bad happened to a counselor's daughter, there'd be hell to pay. I'll get her for you then, he said, looking at Caitlin. He stood there for a few seconds and called out a name. Vi, I know you're there. Come here. A girl walked up the halls of the back door and entered the bar. Her face was just like Caitlin almost described, but the eyes were just the same as she remembers. I'm told you're well acquainted with this girl. <laughs> Not really, but she was after her asses, that's for sure. Vander chuckled. Caitlin saw that there was, this was no laughing matter and decided to talk to this Vi. Hello again. I do believe you have something that belongs to me. She opens her hands and expects to, to get what she came here for. I don't have what you think I have. I saw you run from me as soon as I spotted you. That's not why we ran from you, Cupcake. Cupcake? All these people like her? This is just ludicrous. Well, I... Caitlin stuttered. She was never called such a name in her life. She was appalled by this. I only came here to find the item that belongs to me. The pouch you didn't take is purple with golden spots and was full of money. Are we connecting the dots? Vi gave off a confused look but soon understood what she was talking about. Her eyes widened a second and then made a face. She knew Caitlin, She knew what Caitlin was talking about. Hmm. I know who took it, Vi groaned. She looked at Vander and back at Kate who was not prepared to see who it was who stole her money but you said i know what i said powder but right now i need you to give it back Caitlin was surprised a child took her money how could something so innocent and looking so small take her money and she was shocked and she was shocked to see where they sleep we came all the way from piltover just to lose the loot just so powder can return what she got what is the what does this even matter? There was a boy who spoke up, speaking his mind and protesting about returning Caitlin's money. They looked at Vi and questioned why. Because her family is involved in the Piltover Counselor, dumbass. Vi made it clear that they had no choice but return the money anyway. And his forces were going to search his on any anyway. Vi didn't want Caitlin in their home. 
regardless, so the sooner she leaves, the better. I mean it, Powder. Give the money back. But before she could make an excuse, Vi made a glare. She means it when she said it's okay. Uh, I mean, she means what she says when... She means it when she says what she says. <laughs> I can't read. God. You're Powder just house. like me. <laughs> Oh god, you've killed my ability to read. You attracted the the phoenix can't read disease. It's it's fatal. Oh <laughs> it's, god. It's terminal. <laughs> Just put me out of my misery. Don't Pull worry. the plug, doc. <laughs> she walks over to the bottom bunk and grabs something under her pillow. It was the exact same pouch that was stolen from the apartment. The little girl walks over to Caitlin, handing over the pouch of money back to her with a pouty look on her face. But she didn't make the fa face with puckered up lip. She looked downright disappointed she wasn't able to keep what she stole. What do we say? By reminding Powder what to say. Sorry. And it won't happen again. Caitlin looked at Powder and the rest of the juveniles in this room. She can't help but wonder what caused them to live this way. Powder was a young girl and she couldn't imagine what she went through. Instead of taking back the money... She walked over to the little girl, grabbed her other hand, and put it over the pouch. And she was permanently giving the money to her. You need it more than I do. Powder looked surprised. She was never given money like this before. Vi and her friends were surprised too. They didn't expect this pretty girl to give Powder the money <laughs> just like that. They seemed to expect her to be rude to their little sister. I'm sorry to have wasted your time chasing a bag of money. It's yours now. So, that's it then? You're leaving now? I, I suppose I am. Great. Now get out of here, Cupcake. Vi seems to want Caitlin to leave so badly. She did not want her here any longer, any day. That's a rude way of saying goodbye. Yeah, well, we don't want you to stick around for the Piltover and forces to come find ye us or you. So yeah, bye. Caitlin felt forced. She wanted to say goodbye to Powder, but Powder hugs Caitlin instead. She wasn't good at goodbyes, so she chose to hug Kate instead. Thanks. Thank you. I'm sorry again. It's alright. You don't have to be sorry. Just careful whose pocket pocket you're picking. Vi looks at the juvenile with pure irritation. She did not like that she was down here just for her money. She began to feel paranoid about what would happen if she left now and something happened the next day. She didn't take her eyes off the pretty girl talking to her sister. Well, I'll be going now. Great been waiting to get rid of you for the past 10 minutes or so. It was nice meeting you, Powder. <laughs> Don't be a stranger, Powder shouted. Oh, that was cute. What the fuck? Okay, I gotta get into this. This is nothing like the rest of that episode, but, you know. Goddamn. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. You know what? You got me into this fandom. <laughs> yes! You did it. Well, I, I'll, I'll, when I go to work tomorrow and start uh, doing bailouts and shit, I'll pull up Netflix to the side and I'll pull up Arcane. I'll let you know how it is. <laughs> you don't gotta let me know. I know it's good, but... I'm gonna, like, finish it and you're gonna, like, DM me immediately and you'll be like, I know you finished it. <laughs> how was yeah, it? I'm gonna feel it in my bones. Yeah. <laughs> You're just, you're gonna like wake like you're gonna be at your job doing your little thing and then you and like you're gonna feel it and like you're like in the universe like something shifted and you're just gonna be like something just happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually great. usually I ask like what did you think, but I feel like the more important question. What did is, what did I you think? think? That's the important one. I fucking love this man. I, what a fucking good book to leave off on, like, the 100th episode of fucking Wattpad Book Club. <laughs> this was the I bet. perfect thing. Very, I'm, I'm very excited to see where this goes. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll spin the wheel and it'll land on it. Wheel time. Wheel time. We have a lot of options. Including did we add some of those other wild options? I don't think Because I kind of hope not. No, I don't think we did. I think it's okay, just been perfect. the same. Alright, let's see. How screwed are we next time? <laughs> okay, I think we'll be fine. I'm like, 
I don't know why I keep ho- <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh my god, uh-huh. you free will? Oh my god. Gosh, this is the most difficult thing. There's so many fakes that I want to go to. It's your choice, man. And just I don't know. God. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You d- if if you don't, well, I I don't know if we can uh, disobey the wheel. I mean, didn't we disobey the wheel last week? Did we? Oh, I mean, <laughs> we got distracted. That's what happened. Because, <laughs> like, we've read so many things on here. Because we could go Sanji X-Reader, right? Mm-hmm. There's and then we could do the law X readers, for, mm-hmm. you know, from some of the first ones. Because mm-hmm. I don't think I'll we ever easy. finished that. Or uh, we could do a different law X reader. Oh yeah, that was that's on the wheel. Yeah, literally a different <laughs> law. <X-reader. laughs> a different law X reader. The Waluigiism. We got Zosan. We got Bowiji. Ugh, that one was so good. Yeah, there's dude, we have so many. I've also the My Sword and Shield. We're never gonna. That be- was Zora, right? Yeah, and they like, finally updated chapters, so we have yet to like wa- like read them for a Wattpad video. Oh gosh, so we'll see. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe if I cannot think of anything within the week, we'll go back to this. I'm gonna like text you on Tuesday, like, so what are we reading? And you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> you're like, hey, can I have that wheel real quick? And you just spin it to figure out what you're gonna. I do. just spin it myself. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, uh, uh, uh Waluigiism, yeah. <laughs> That one works. That's what my pick was, not the wheels. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to find something. Alrighty. Alright, well, you've officially got me into the arcane fandom. This is beautiful. <laughs> I'll send you hello fan art and TikToks. Hell yeah. I keep getting confused about what characters look like, because I, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I'm picturing, like, uh... Patters this little baby child, and then like the clover, the clover closure, clagger, clagger is like this big broody man. He's not like a man, but he's like the same age as Vi. Oh shit! Really? <laughs> yeah, like all the kids are around the same age. Wait, they're kids? <laughs> yeah, the little really? high school. Yeah, they're children. I thought they were like Powder is obviously the youngest because she's like ten here. I thought they were like I thought they were young adults, like eighteen, nineteen, twenties. Oh no, no, and no, I no! Powder I say was... Max. Maybe Vi's fifteen. Damn, he's a fucking talented teenager stealing fucking gold. <laughs> parkour, you know. Yeah, this is straight up parkour. <laughs> but uh. Uh fuck! I forgot my script. <laughs> I forgot what I'm supposed to say at the end of these. Thank you for watching. Yeah. I'm glad you have enjoyed another episode of the Wattpad Book Club. Yup. Uh, check out the playlist on screen for more. Watch all 100 episodes at the same time. That would fuck over your brain. <laughs> and I mean, be- if you want to speed run it like that, then... Yeah, that's the easiest way to watch all the Wattpad Book Club. You'll finish it in an hour if you have all 100 of them up at the same time in every tab. <laughs> oh, gosh. And uh, thank you for joining me, Jolene, for the 100th episode. <laughs> it was quite nice. I did enjoy. Yes, yes. And uh, if you would like to read this book and support the author, I'll have a link down below in the description if you want to go ahead and fucking, like, binge read this at, like, 2 a.m. on, like, a, on a Tuesday. <laughs> Jolene. <laughs> Look, I will be <laughs> fast asleep. Mm-hmm. You know, I will. I got, calls. Man. I gotta look. If it's two a.m., I gotta wake up in like an hour. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, my name is Phoenix. That was Jolene, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.